Hey everybody, this is King Kong Rong, and today I've got a casual player's guide to characters and builds for Path of Exile. As the title states, this video is intended for casual and beginner players, so let me state this up front. If you're a veteran hardcore player, this video may not be for you because odds are you won't learn anything new. So, if you're a casual or beginner player and you find this video useful, please leave a like and subscribe. It'll really help me out. Also, the footage was captured from my Twitch stream, so if you wanted to catch me live, follow my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash kingkongwrong25. Now, this video is broken down into several sections, which are timestamped in the description below if you want to skip to those. We're going to go over to character classes, where to find character build ideas, how to find relevant builds, how to read builds, demystifying the skill tree, how to read paste bins, uh, skill gems and links, and a brief overview of ascendancies. Alright, let's get on with the video. So when you choose a character class, you have seven to choose from. So what's what, right? You got the Templar. So a Templar um, is kind of like a balance between strength and intelligence. They can use melee, but they also are pretty good with spells. They're most famous for their use of uh, totems. Like they summon these little statues that attack for you. You got the shadow. The shadow is kind of like your standard kind of like rogue character. They can become like assassins or like uh, mindling uh, saboteurs. It can be pretty fun. And you've got the marauder, the pure strength, uh, kind of like mauler. I'll do the scion last. Up, 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 up. Go back, go back. Yes, yes, do your model thing. <laughs> a ranger. So if you're a fan of, like, bow and arrow, range attack, ranger is your girl. So the duelist is a, a fighter class, much like the marauder and the shadow, but um, they have a few more uh, defensive options. Finally, the witch. Classic mage character. She can become like a necromancer, elementalist, or like a, an occultist. I'll go over the ascendancies later. And finally, there's the scion. The scion is like a jack of all trades. She, when she fully develops, can take aspects of each of the other six character classes. So it's all about what you prefer in terms of gameplay. You know. But before you even get to that, I think. Um, before you commit to a character, um, you kind of want to know what builds to follow, right? Because you know you, you don't want to like start a character and then find out maybe that's not really for you. Just because the one thing about that big care uh, passive skill tree that I showed you is it's very unforgiving. You don't get very many opportunities to to respec, like a full respec. You can um, there's a limited number of times you can refund a skill point. To redirect yourself on the tree. So let me show you that tree again. So for example, let's say you know you wanted to, you didn't want Eldritch Battery. You have you, you you can you can refund it, but you know you, there's only so much you can do. You can do one at a time. You can't do a full respec unless you finish the game, and that's only once that you can do a full respec really. So what do you do? So there's two websites that I use for finding um, character builds. The first one is called poebuilds.cc, or PoE Builds, Path of Exile Builds. There's a whole collection of them. Uh, you can search by the different character classes too. So make it easier to narrow down. If you kind of figured, maybe I want to try a witch character or a ranger character. You can click into it and then these are all the builds that people have submitted um, based on that character. You can even you know drill down even further by the ascendancy if you want to be dead eye raider or pathfinder. Now if you don't know any of this you say well okay let's pick a skill that I might like to use. You know so let's go back one screen. Let's say I want to build a melee character. 
So now it's broken down by the different melee skills. You can see Cyclone is a very popular skill. We call it Spin to Win. And you know, and you kind of just you know scan through to see what what may be appealing to you. But that's still a little overwhelming. I get it. Um, another site that I like to use is uh, PoE Vault. It's PoE dash Vault dot com. Now here too, you can break it down by builds. Uh, by, by by build, sorry, by class and ascendance. So each class can actually be one of three specialties. And again, I'll go over that in a bit. Um, but even knowing where to go, how do you know what build is right for you? Um, there's a couple search terms you can use uh, to find builds that are relevant to, to you and or the season. The first thing I'm going to suggest is you look for... 3.11. That's the current version of the game. So, you know, all the current buffs, nerfs will apply on any build that's 3.11. If you go find like an awesome looking build, but it says, you know, build for 3.7, well, you know, that build might have been awesome four versions ago, but if those skills got nerfed or aren't min-maxed uh, for, the, for the season, it may not be viable. You know? So yeah, look for where it says 3.11, because that's the current version of the game. The second tip is to look for where it says League Starter. If you're new to the game, odds are you don't have... Um, let me look at my... You don't have a bunch of characters where you can swap, you know, loot around. You know, so I, I my main characters, my two mains... Uh, are, are, are leveling up, picking up uniques, high value rares, currency that I can start to share with my uh, newer characters and help them level up even faster. Now, if you're new or if you're a casual player, you may not have all that, right? So, again, you're going to want to look for um, 3.11 and anything that says League Starter. So let's go back. Just do a you know control find. League start. Or league start. League start league starter. So what league start is just means is uh, it's not gonna be reliant on any specific uniques um or um very expensive uh equipment that you would need currency to trade for. It means you can start the game and not worry about um, whether you have the right equipment to play it. So, you know, no surprise that some of these are very popular because, as you can see, these are all League Starters, Starters, 3.11 buffs. So these are all current and apply to people who are just starting the game. So beginner and solo self-friendly caster. Yeah, so this is actually funny. Enki's Arc Witch, I used this way back when I started. I, I used, like, the 3.5 version of this, so um, it's I'm I'm really happy to see uh, Enki has updated it for 3.11. Yeah, my first character was an Arc Elementalist. So, now that you've chosen a build, how do you read the build, right? Because um, let's go pick one that I'm uh, using. Yeah, so Earth Shatter Juggernaut. League Starter, 3.11. thought this was a fun one. You know, and you'll read what... A, a good a good uh, build guide will go over um, what the, the play style is going to be. And the pros and cons of that particular build. Right? Um, it also shows you, like, how your skill tree will look like as you level. Ideally, so if you click here, screen will load, and it'll say, you know, basically by level twenty something, your your tree should look like this, right? Ah, you know what? Before I forget, I should I should probably 
uh, explain the tree a bit to kind of debunk or demystify, not debunk, demystify a few things about the skill tree. So here's the skill tree for my uh, my shadow. Now, again, this is the full tree. So there are 1,200 plus nodes on this skill tree. It's massive. And again, most people's eyes just glaze over when uh, when they see this. But it's really easy to read once you think about it. The uh, skill tree is divided basically into thirds. The top third here is focused mo mainly on intelligence nodes. On the left and bottom left, the left thirds is mostly strength nodes. Whereas the right and bottom right are dexterity. So why does that matter? When you create a character, um, your your initial node starts around uh, starts differently. So the Marauder will start uh, his character uh, somewhere around here because it's a it focuses on strength and strength related skills. Anything with war cries or cannot be stunned, you know, uh, <laughs> damage with axes. The the witch, the the, the spell, the main spellcaster um, class tends to uh, will start here in the in the true north, I guess you could say, uh, because uh their their skills are yeah right around here actually. Focus on spellcasting and intelligence, so everything to do with arcane, elemental damage. It will start here in this wheel. So here, the shadow, because the shadow is kind of a mix of um, in dexterity and intelligence, is all starts in this corner. So my character is a little, this character is focused on chaos damage, picks up intelligence nodes. But also, um, some physical damage, and they'll start to like branch out into here as I as I level up. Far south here is a duelist. You know, it's dexterity and intelligence. Um, so it'll mix it up with like, where is that? Ah, uh, yes, stuff with shields because uh, the gladiator ascendancy uh, has a lot of defensive options. So, theoretically, it is possible for you to build, uh, let's say, a shadow um, that has, that can go all into this side, right? Let's say you wanted to have an axe-wielding assassin. Fine, that that's fine, but realize that if you're going to try to make your way out here, you're going to be giving up your opportunity cost of stuff over here, you know, which would be which might be more beneficial to the build you're shooting for. Nevertheless, it's good to know where you start out. The Scion, because it's an all-rounder, will start in the middle. So your choice is actually quite complicated because, you know, uh, how do you choose? So you have to choose your builds properly, you know, because the Scion can, can go everywhere. Now, you don't want to have a, a jack-of-all-trades where they have a, a little bit of everything because then they won't excel at anything by the time you get to endgame. So yeah, that's the passive skill tree. When you're going through uh, builds, you might see something like this, where it says um, POB, or Paste Bin. Now, if you just click on it, it's just this, you know, raw text, right? You're not going to be able to read that, unless you download a, a specific app or software. Uh, but there is a way to read it. Uh, you know, there's a handy website called. So all you have to do is you copy and paste here. Click on import.
And there. So, you know, the, the passive skill tree is already filled out for you. So as you level up, you you know that this is kind of where you need to you know build your character out. Yeah, let's go back to this Earth Shattered Juggernaut. So as you go through and you read the pros and cons, you the, the more you read the pros and cons, um, the more you, you can decide whether or not this is the build for you. You know, um, tells you the ascendancy. You know, any, the importance of certain things. Bandits, I mean, that's that's part of a storyline choice. But here is really the more important thing, is the gems and the links. Meaning, what skills uh, does your character use? So this is the Earth Shatter build, so it's going to show you uh, some details. But what the, So what this says is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 6 skills listed here. So that means you're going to slot your skills into a into a an item that has six slots to put their skills in. So what do I mean by that? Armor or weapon has a number of skill slots to them. And the color is you know determined by uh, what skill it's it's primarily using. So flame dash, intelligence, the blue gem. So I don't have any six slots because uh, at level twenty one I just don't get a six slot item unless uh, I have a a higher level character with a that can loan me one you know this just gives you an idea of what uh what skills or spells that your character will be using and then gear again recommended tells you what people are shooting for oh well, here's an example of a six skill so this person's warhammer is lit has the main skill and then there's like five four supports to it that uh, it, it will enhance the performance of their uh, you know, primary skill. Oh, and look, this one even has a leveling cheat sheet. And it tells you, like, wha what to get and what to use per level. So that's a pretty handy guide. As I alluded to earlier, there's um, skills. You know, your active skills, like uh, Essence Strain here or Blight. Um, so, for example, here... My blight skill. If I right click, that's what happens. My left click is just me shooting an arrow. Uh, but I also have a middle key. So with Path of Exile, the most most players only really focus on one to two buttons to play with at the same time. You know, um, because generally speaking, Path of Exile is, to, is played really quickly. You know, you want to go through a map, clear it really quick. You don't want to have to fumble around with like a million different keys. So there are, aside from your, your three mouse buttons, you have your five keys here. And you can hold control. So there's a maximum of 13 buttons to press. So even though there's literally hundreds of skills, you want to focus on maybe two, three max that are you know, use actively on your keyboard. Uh, whereas this, these are just switches for um, my aura to turn them on or off. So flesh and stone. Uh, it's a passive skill, so I don't really need to click it every time like I do one of my active things like that. Now I can turn this aura on or off. So it'll, it'll and we press it once, and it's always on. You know, but let me go over uh, in more in depth the um, linking. Whenever you have a skill slotted into a weapon or piece of armor, you can also add support gems to it, support skills. Again, that'll either enhance the well. Usually, it's to enhance the the skill. There are somewhere it'll actually you'll take a damage reduction in exchange for something else like. Faster, faster attacks, faster casting, greater area of effect. You know, in return for that, it's like minus ten percent overall damage. Um, so, as an example, so this is blight. 
put it in my helmet. So at its base here, as you can see, it'll do modifiers to spell damage, etc., etc., etc. Debuff lasts 2.75 seconds. Secondary debuff lasts 1.28. Deals 57 chaos damage per second. Debuff can have up to 20 layers of damage. That's like just a base skill. But what happens when I add Infuse Channeling? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, let's compare. So, 57 chaos damage, have up to 20 layers of damage. Infuse Channeling, now it deals 71.2 chaos damage per second. And while channeling or holding down the key, you take less chaos damage and the infusion grant lasts 6.6 .6 seconds after finish channeling. So after I let go of the key, uh, I'll still be buffed for like 6 or so seconds. Now let's put Arcane Surge on. So the, the damage is still at 71.2, but with Arcane Surge... I'll grant 13% more spell damage on top of the the buff I already got from Infused Channeling. But the only way these work together is with these links. So as you can see, this one is not linked to here, so it doesn't affect here. Here, it's linked together, so the support gems will uh, add their effects to the main gem. So in this case, Blight. Let's take another example. So Essence Drain. 65 to 98 chaos damage. Fires one projectile. Debuff lasts 4.18. Deals 256 chaos damage per second. Cool. Now let's put Void Manipulation Support in. So again, what was it? It was 65 to 98 chaos damage and 260 DPS chaos. With Void Manipulation, the overall damage goes up. 80, 81 to 121 Chaos Damage, and 322 Chaos Damage per second. Now what about Controlled Destruction? This one has reduced Critical Strike Chance, which is fine. I don't have Critical Strikes to spell. But it deals 25% more spell damage, so it's a flat increase. Look at that, 101 to 151 Chaos Damage, and 402 Chaos DPS. So again, linking up these skills uh, al allows for pretty large buff to the, the main skill. So that that's the overview of skill gems and links. That's it. <laughs> So that's those are the basics for um, for casual players, new players, beginner players. Um, hopefully, this was a good introduction for for people to uh, to this game. And uh, yeah.